I decided to do some summer grafting because I lost some of the scion that I grafted this spring. Just to show you what happened, this is the Howard Miracle Plum, and there's the graft, and nothing happened. It's toast. And then here is also the same Howard Miracle Plum up here, and the graft took, and it's grown really good. So it was 50% uh, success rate on this. I did the same graft on both sides. I don't know why one went one worked and one did not But I am trying to do some summer Grafting I've done an experiment and I'm documenting if these will work or if they won't last year I did summer grafting and none of them took so I'm trying out a new method So here's one method this is taking a wedding mesh or a wedding screen that you can put candies and stuff in. They have little ties. So this I decided to put over the scion wood that I grafted. All of these grafts are whip and tongue or cleft grafts. I don't know if it makes much of a difference between the two. I've had success with apple trees, but these are plum and apricot and also a jujube that I've grafted. So this first one, um, I grafted it, I took a rubber band, wrapped it around there, then I wrapped it in paraffin in here, and then I put this wedding gift bag wrapped over it. So this is supposed to help shield or make it so that there's not as much direct sun on it because we get to 110 degree temperatures here. This one, same type of thing, I basically grafted and put a rubber band around it, wrapped it with the paraffin, then I put tin foil over it. Now last year when I put tin foil over it, because I saw you can do this during the summer, um, I noticed that all of my scion wood died. So what I'm doing differently this time is taking the tin foil and I'm just covering it, allowing for heat to ventilate, because I think that it just basically cooked them last time. So that is for these two. In terms of the explanation, this is a Santa Rosa plum, and I've grafted this is an Inca plum. So the Inca is here and here, small little grafts. Oh, the other difference too. I grafted this Inca onto one year old wood, and then this Inca I grafted onto new wood. So this is green wood, and then this is. When you're older, I, I, it's a total experiment. We'll see how it works or if it even makes it. And I'll give you an update when I find out. If we come over to this other side, this is the Ozark Premier Plum. And I've done the same exact thing. Left an opening so that heat can come out instead of getting trapped inside of that. The paraffin will keep the moisture in there, but I don't want to bake it because the, the tin foil I'm not sure if it reflects the heat tons or if it will contain the heat in there. I'm not sure. Total experiment. So let's go to the next tree. Okay, this is a plume cot tree. I have only had one successful graft on this plume cot. I grafted six, five varieties onto this thing and only one of them has taken. Um, I'm not grafting as much on this one, even though I, I don't love the fruit as much, but I'm going to try different grafts. So this is an Ozark Premier. Um, I did it over on the Santa Rosa and the difference that I made on this one is the same type of thing. I took a padded packaging bag and if I go to the bottom here, you can see I left it open because I don't want to have it lock in all the heat in there. So it also had a rubber band wrapped around it, paraffin wrapped around it, and then this bag to kind of help insulate or shield it from the sun because it is blazing hot here. And if we come over to this side, this is the Golden Delight Cherry that I grafted on here. And again, I'm just putting that nice little bag to wrap around it to kind of shield the sun from it. I like to pride myself on my grafting abilities because I've had lots of successful grafts, but for some reason on this tree, grafting just does not want to work. Um, so here is an example of what happened in the spring. This graft did not take and I just removed the wood because it was toast. All right, let's go to the next tree. Here's my Moore Park apricot and I really like Moore Parks. So what I've done is three different versions here. And this variety, this is the La Sigurdi Massad, a Middle Eastern apricot that I'm grafting onto this. So tinfoil is over the small scion wood. 
that had a rubber band, paraffin, tin foil, and then this to kind of help shield the sun from going onto the tin foil. And it is open on the back side there. Here's the packaging again, except this one is totally wrapped around it. So we'll see if the insulation will protect it. And here is another one with tin foil. It's open off to the side there. This piece of scion wood that I grafted in the spring did not take and a new branch emerged. So um, I left that on there. And that was a Chinese apricot, but it was from a neighbor's variety. And I don't think we got the one year wood. He didn't have much available. If we go on to the back side here, here we have two others. This one is the royalty apricot. And again, same type of thing, except I have tin foil with slight openings, not totally sealed. And then over here, I have this one that is covered. And you can see that it's, it's shading slightly on that scion wood that's sitting in there. And I'm hoping that it will work out. This is Sparks Mammoth Apricot. It's supposed to be one of the largest apricots that you can get. Um, it was a large piece of wood and I was able to graft it here and I placed this over the top of it. Um, here's the other experiment with the tin foil. This is west facing. So I want to make sure that I'm protecting the branch and the scion wood really well um, from the sun and the heat because it is going to get really hot. So um, this is a Tilton apricot tree that I've grafted this variety onto and we'll see if it takes. I tried to do the Chinese grafting here. Obviously didn't take because I have new growth that's coming off to the side here. I allowed this to grow because I knew that this did not take in time. So it needed to grow. And then over here, this is the sugar cane jujube. Some people told me that I did not have a sugarcane jujube tree and that it looked more like a honey jar. And it was very, very sweet. It is very sweet. The shape of it is not like what I could see online in terms of a sugarcane. It did look more like a honey jar fruit. So I got this variety of sugarcane to graft and try out and left it open on the under part. So hopefully it'll just protect it from the heat. On the back side here, you can see there's a grafted variety. There I have one grafted and here I have one grafted and this is all new growth. This growth and there's some fruit up there. Yay. Um, this growth is, this is a Redlands jujube that was grafted on here and then also Redlands that's grafted up to the top up there. So these two are Redlands jujube and they're already fruiting. This is the first year it's been grafted. Jujubes are freaking awesome. Look at this guy, already, man, alive. That'll be ready to eat in like a couple of weeks. That's huge. Um, I did read that once the jujube is well established, you can actually have two fruiting seasons. And you can see here, there's a lot of fruit growing on it. Some of them are larger than others, but man, there's a lot. And this seems to be pretty early for it to be fruiting and be this big. Usually they fruit in July. So I might have two crops this year. Okay, sorry, I digress. Either way, those varieties that I grafted in the spring for the jujube are growing fruit and it's doing really well. So I will make a follow-up video in about a month to show if there's any progress with this summer grafting. Hopefully it'll work. If not, then it's just a waste of two hours of my life, which is totally fine. Okay, I hope this information was beneficial and I will give you the update as soon as I know what varieties worked, which ones did not, and what um, can be done during the summer, especially in this desert heat. Have a stellar day.